Second Kings chapter 7 has already been read. Uh, just let me highlight uh, verse 3. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? Let us pray. Oh, God, our Father, we thank you now for your presence and for your power. We pray that in this moment the people would see less of me and more of thee because you alone are our rock and our redeemer. And this is our prayer for Christ's sake, and it is in his name that we pray. And all of God's people said amen. amen. I want to use for a theme on this 148th church anniversary the miracle of hope. The miracle of hope. You know, every time the church gathers together for worship, we stand at the threshold of possibility. We're wondering what will be the word from the Lord? What new thing will God do in us? What new thing will God say to us? Where will God call us to go? We are standing at the threshold of possibility. This evening, we ought to have an expectation of an attitude of expectation. It is another anniversary for Christians who have worshiped for generations on Evans Road. They've been holding up the banner of Christ and good times and in hard times. The name of this congregation has changed at least twice that I know of, and yet it still stands. Members have joined and some have had to move, but the church still stands. Now the church is under the anointed mantle of gifted and dynamic new leadership and is filled with faithful and committed members. And someone here knows, I think they could even feel that something good is going to happen even if we don't know what it is. This is not simply a day where we look at what happened in the past. The past is informative. The past is inspirational. But today is also an anticipatory event where we dream about what God might do in the future. Getting from where we are to where God is leading depends on the decisions that we make, the choices that we make right now. It was the same way for the prophet Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 7. Now, I don't want to confuse Elisha with Elijah, but Elisha was the protege of the prophet Elijah. Elisha first appears in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 19 when God told Elijah to look for a young man who would succeed him as the new prophet in Israel. Elijah did as God told him, and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who at the time was plowing in the fields. And, and Elijah went up to Elisha and threw his cloak around him, which was a sign that Elisha had been chosen by God. Meeting Elijah was a turning point in Elisha's life. It, it was the day where he decided that he was going forward and not backward. He set his sights on what was ahead. He, he made up his mind. He set out to follow Elijah from that day forward. Sometimes we, we, we ought to be moving forward, but we are spending too much time focused on what was behind. Sometimes the church, if I can be so honest, tries to hold on to programs that no longer meet current needs when God has called us to do a new thing. We ought to be respectful of everyone, but sometimes it is simply time to move forward. That's what Elisha did when he met Elijah. One day, Elisha was walking along, along the road with his mentor, and suddenly a chariot of fire and horses appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha never saw his mentor again, but from that point forward, the scripture says that the spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha. Elisha became the leading prophet for the nation, he led the people during a difficult and tumultuous time. The kingdom built by David and passed on to Solomon had, uh, had collapsed and divided into the northern and southern kingdom. The Assyrians had conquered the nation. These were trying and turbulent times. In Elisha's time, the biggest issue of the day, in fact, was a famine that plagued the people. 
Now the famine was not caused by drought, nor was it caused by a pest that had come in and destroyed the crops. The famine had been caused by Israel's Israel, uh, enemies. Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, had laid siege to the city, and that prevented uh, anyone from leaving the boundaries of Israel, and it kept supplies from coming in the kingdom. Syria surrounded the city and cut off the supply line so nothing could go in and nothing could come out. The famine lasted so long that eating the head of a donkey became a delicacy among the people. The famine left people so desperate that they resorted to doing things they never thought they would do. They ate things they never thought they would eat. Scripture says they even resorted to cannibalism. 2 Kings 7, as if to show how terrible things had come, the text tells us now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate, and they said to each other, why stay here until we die? These four lepers had become victims of the famine just like everyone else. They needed food just like everyone else, but they dared ask a question that nobody else was willing to ask, which is why stay here until we die? Why stay in the same place we're in right now? Why deal with the same problem over and over again? Why not choose to change and act to improve our condition? Why stay here until we die? It's a surprising scene because these four lepers are unlikely heroes. We expect to hear about kings and prophets who are heroes, but, but lepers were outcasts. Lepers were avoided at all costs. Lepers were considered unclean and unwelcome, but God put these four lepers right in the middle of the story, and they have something to teach us and teach the church about our mission from the Lord. First of all, be careful about thinking there is someone God cannot use. God found four lepers, people that had been ostracized, people who had been kicked out, people that were insignificant and considered nobodies. But, but let me tell you, church, no life is too insignificant, too limited, and no church is disqualified. If God can use four lepers, then God can use anyone, anytime, anywhere to do anything. Now, whatever the reason for giving these lepers a cameo appearance in Israel's story, I'm glad they are here because sooner or later, uh, there comes a time in every life, in every church, where people ask what the lepers ask, why sit here until? You see, eventually we have to ask ourselves if we want things to stay as they are or right now, or do we want things to change for the better? Are we ready to live or are we just going to settle and die? These lepers had a choice to make, and so do we. Look with me for a moment at the options that these lepers considered. The first one they considered was going back to the city. They said, we could go back to the city. But remember, these were lepers. Lepers suffered from an unsightly skin disorder. Going back to the city was not a good idea. They would have been unwelcome there. They would have been run out of town. They, they would have been ostracized. They would have been shunned. They would have been kicked out. Nobody wanted to be around a leper. Going back to the city was not a wise move. But so often this is the option that we take in life. We, we go back when we ought to be going forward. The reasons for wanting to go back sometimes are good, and, and people who want to go back can be good too, but when something worked in the past, sometimes we think we ought to go back and try to recapture the experience we had before, but there's a reason why it stopped working in the past. Everything has a season to live and a season to change. Programs have a season. Ministries have a season. Worship has a season. Music has a season. Values do not change, but methods have to make progress. The lepers first considered going back to the city, but going back may not be the cho choice that takes us where God wants us to go. It's good to remember how we got where we are, but we cannot go back and recreate what was. God is the God that said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. And if you know like I know how good God has been and how far God has brought us from and how much God has brought us through, 
how could we ever want to go back to where we were? God has been too good, blessed us too much, opened too many doors, shown too much mercy, performed too many miracles for us to go back. And it's not just true for the church, but in our lives as well. When we talk about going back, we're saying we're going to drop out of the race. But how could we, if God has helped us to make it this far, how can we drop out of the race now? Because look at the things that we've got to understand. If God brought us here and we're here right now, then even though we've been knocked down, at least we can say we're standing right now. We may have been knocked over, but we're standing right now. We may have been through the valley of the shadow of death, but we're standing right now. And if we are standing, we cannot go back to where the Lord has brought us from. No way and no how. We may not know what we're going to do next, but we ought to make up in our mind that back is not the answer. The Lord brought us out. The Lord brought us through. The Lord has brought us over and we may not be satisfied with where we are now but one thing is certain back is not the answer the lepers said maybe we'll go back but then they realized that that wasn't the right move so they they considered a second option the second possibility was simply to stay right where they were things were so bad that they thought about sitting in the same place even though doing so meant that death was certain you see, no, no church, no organization, no ministry that wants to honor God can sit right where they are. Sitting symbolizes stagnation. Sitting is settling for less than God wants to give. Sitting is thinking that because we made it this far, we can coast the rest of the way. Sitting is not doing something because we aren't sure of what will happen if we try, but we cannot stay right where we are. Benjamin E. May said that it must be borne in mind that the tragedy of life does not lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It is not a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity to have no dreams to fulfill. It's not a disaster to be unable to capture your idea, but it is a disaster to have no idea to capture. And then he goes on to say, it's not failure, but low aim that is sin. We cannot always sit right Right where we are. Have you ever seen or been inside of an abandoned property? Isn't it odd that even though a building sits idle and empty, it will deteriorate as fast or even faster than one that people live in every day? If you let a building sit, you don't live in it, you don't turn on the lights, you don't use the water, you don't walk around, it will still fall apart from sitting. Tree roots will bust up the sidewalk, vines will climb up the windows, pipes will burst in the wintertime, hinges will rust, all because the house is sitting idle. Uh, doing nothing seems harmless, but, but it really is not. Sitting is something that will do us in. The leopards could see, the lepers could see that by doing nothing, they were doomed. If they sat where they were, they were not going to be any better off than if they went back to the city. The hi this highlights one of the biggest barriers to, uh, to us reaching our potential. Because a church, a ministry, uh, uh, will never become great if it tries not to change. Everything, just, everything uh, has to change and, and some things need to change more than others. But if we sit still, we will surely die. Lepers decided we can't sit right here. We, we want to live too much. They want life to be better. And they knew that life would only get better if they made an effort to do something rather than do nothing. They said there's a famine in the land. We're on the verge of starvation. But something within us tells us that we cannot sit here and just die. Something within us tells us that there is another option. And to be honest, we know that too. We know that nothing will change until we decide that we want it bad enough that staying where we are is not an option. Our health will not change. Our finances will not change. Our happiness will not change. Our situations will not change by sitting right where we are even though these men were lepers and their options were limited they refused to sit down and die they they said one day we might die but but today is not going to be that day we've got to do something and maybe this is why the apostle paul wrote to the philippians he said not that i have already obtained this
this or have already been made complete, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. In other words, he was saying, I may not be all that want, uh, God wants me to be, but I'm not going to settle for where I am. I'm going to press. I'm going to grow. I'm going to reach. I couldn't kick the habit last year, but I'm going to keep trying again. I didn't get the job I wanted last time. I'm going to polish my skills, dust off my resume, and apply for another job. I'm not going to sit down. I'm not going to wait on things to change. I'm just going to press until I win the prize. That's what these lepers tried to do. They said, we'll throw out option one. We're not going to go back to the city. We're going to throw out option number two because we're not going to sit here and die. They decided that they need to, to look at option number three. Verse four says, so let us go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. And they decided with that to go forward. Church, this is the miracle of hope that instead of going back, they decided that if they acted on their hope, then God might have something for their future. Instead of sitting still, they arose and took a chance. Something happens whenever a person gets tired of being tired. That once we decide that long enough is long enough, we find ourselves in a position where we're willing to consider new possibilities. That's what the lepers did that day. They wondered what would happen if they acted in faith and hope. And I think that's one thing that you've got in abundance in this place. You've got faith and you've got hope. The lepers said, let's go over to the Arameans. That, that was hope. They're, the Arameans were their enemies. And, and so this decision to go over to their camp was both surprising and unexpected. But hasn't someone told us that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. The lepers knew what would happen if they went back to the camp. They knew what would happen if they went back to the city. They knew what would happen if they sat there and died, but they did not know what would happen if they tried to go to the Arameans. All they needed to do was have a little hope. Desmond Tutu says hope is being able to see the light despite all the darkness all around you. Someone else said that hope is the thing that if you have it, you've got everything you need. Someone else said that hope because God answers when you least expect it. And then someone else said don't lose hope because you don't know what tomorrow might bring. So the four lepers said we've got to act on our hope and go over to the camp of the Arameans. They did not know whether they would live or whether they would die, but they figured they'd at least give God a chance to act on their faith. So when they took the road less traveled, they they found out that God can do the unexpected and that's really how the Lord works sometimes that once we take a risk God opens up the windows and pours out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive that once we venture out into deeper waters deeper waters of faith deeper waters of trust deeper waters of obedience God can fill our nets with a catch so big we won't be able to carry it by ourselves in 2 Kings 7 God was merely waiting on somebody to go forward in hope so they could see what God could do. You see, in fact, the Bible says that when the lepers arrived at the camp of the Arameans, they found out that God had already been there. Even uh, though they had worked uh, that to do God had been there before they got there the fact of the matter is before the lepers arrived God caused the sound to uh, the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army which made them say the king of Israel has found allies to attack us they were worried about an army but it was just four lepers they were worried about an enemy overtaking them but it was just four lepers so the Arameans got up and fled left all their possessions behind and it was only four lepers hiding behind some stones. Why? Because the lepers were walking by faith and not by sight. So by the time the lepers got to the camp, instead of finding guards waiting to detain them, they found an empty camp, abandoned tents, unclaimed horses, an abundance of gold and silver, clothes and a whole lot of food. The lepers did not know 
what was going to happen if they move forward but they said if God is on our side then we're going to go for it they didn't know what would happen if they tried something new but they said if God is on our side we'll take the risk and wait for the miracle of hope they did not know what would be waiting for them in the camp but through God God gave them the protection of faith and so I wonder today if there's anybody here that's made up in their minds that you aren't going back because God has brought you through another year I wonder if you made up your mind that you aren't staying where you are because God has been too good and you've decided that come what may you're going to trust in the Lord you're going to lean on God's name you're going you might win and you might lose but you're going to lay out your faith and trust in God you're going to keep pressing your way and reaching until you get there I don't know what the blessing will be but I do know that God has something in store and I just came by to tell you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path somebody ought to say I'm going for it because God is a good God the Lord is your strength and your salvation you ought to go for it the Lord is the strength of your life you ought to go for it God has some good for you you ought to reach for it God has a hope and a future you ought to stretch for it aim for it strive for it pray for it wait for it and God will make a way somehow he'll open windows he'll close doors he'll divide waters he'll bring down giants he'll tear down walls God will he never fails he never fails thanks be to God just stretch just reach just try and the Lord will <laughs>